Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Anahid Mirza Tony. One of the courses that I teach is physiology, and today I am going to talk about lupus, an autoimmune disease. Things to ponder: Have you ever thought about why females manifest stronger immunity, but at the same time they are subject to higher incidence of autoimmune diseases? Why do men and women manifest autoimmune diseases differently? The mystery of the immune dimorphism is the subject of numerous researchers, clinical studies, and even the pandemic of COVID-19 virus. Part of the answer could be found in the evolutionary perspective of the maternal care, giving birth, and reproduction. It seems the whole suite of hormonal composition, specifically estrogen. Is a key player in manifestation of the autoimmune responses, as well as genetics, epigenetics, and environmental factors. Lupus is also referred to as wolf disease. Lupus is Latin for wolf. Lupus is a very complex, heterogeneous, chronic, long-term, non-contagious autoimmune disease. It could affect many body organs, including but not limited to kidney, skin, heart, brain, blood, and joints. The symptoms of the lupus is not consistent, and it can change over time, and it might come and go. Because the symptoms of lupus is not consistent, the initial diagnosis of this disease is challenging. Lupus is most commonly diagnosed between the age of 16 and 55. There are four types of lupus: systemic lupus erythematosus or SLE, the most common type; cutaneous lupus, a form of lupus that is limited to the skin. A drug-induced lupus, a lupus-like disease caused by certain prescription drugs, and neonatal lupus, a rare condition that affects infants of a woman who have lupus. So, what about the news and views, guys, on lupus? I chose this review article, which is based on the gender differences in pathogenesis and outcome of lupus and lupus nephritis. And we will see. Basically, it's a very good resource to talk about the differences that exist. Lupus affects females and males in a different fashion in terms of onset, diagnosis, severity, and morbidity rate of the patients. According to the Alliance for Lupus Research (ALR), more than ninety percent of people with lupus are women. African Americans, Latins, Asians, and Native Americans are two to three times at greater risk than Caucasian. A patient with lupus usually produces too much of the protein known as type one interferons, which stimulates the immune system. So there is no cure for lupus, but it is a highly treatable condition. Treatments are to suppress the symptoms and manage the pain. Medications include non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, anti-malarial drugs, and corticosteroids. The other resource that I have is the article on protecting the kidney in systemic lupus erythematosus from diagnosis to therapy. And lupus nephritis is the inflammation of the kidney, which is caused by the systemic lupus. And unfortunately, up to fifty percent of the people with SLE may go on to develop lupus nephritis. Diagnosis of LN include hematuria, which is presence of blood in the person's urine, as well as proteinuria, presence of protein more than normal level in the urine, or even decline in the renal function. This diagram shows the initiation phase, progression. As well as the end-stage renal disease or ESRD, glomerular immune complex deposition, which you see here on number one, is going to initiate all of this immune response in the glomerulus. This is the Bowman capsule, and you see, for example, CD16 monocytes. They all get activated. It Initiates this immune complex deposition, which leads to your glomerular injury, 
as a result of that it will go to the next stage which will cause cell damage and it will cause tubular interstitial damage by this complex interaction between renal macrophages and your uh, peritubular capillary endothelial units so as a result of that you will get lupus nephritis May is Lupus Awareness Month. Not only the physical burden of this disease is our patients' initial issues, but also mental health, such as anxiety, depression, bipolar disease, mood swings, memory problems, fatigue, psychological distress, and some of the possible mental health assessments are interventions on psychiatric aspects of lupus, cognitive behavior therapy, CBT, motivational interviewing, MI, and counseling. Ultimately, we can support and have awareness by organizations such as Walk With Us to Cure Lupus. You are going to hear one of the fascinating stories of my student, Rebecca Thomas. And I hope you enjoy this talk and find it informative and inspiring. Hi, my name is Becca. I'm a student at WCU. I'm going into intermediate med surge and I kind of want to talk to you guys about my story. I have lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. And for those of you that don't know what those are, it's an autoimmune disease that attacks the joints and uh, connective tissues in your body. Rheumatoid arthritis attacks your hands and your feet, whereas lupus attacks kind of everything else. I was diagnosed in 2016. I was covered in hives a lot of the time, and I had uh, angioedema, which is just uh, swelling around your mouth and your eyes. My eyes would swell shut, my lips would swell, my throat closed a couple of, like, swell shut and closed a couple of times, uh, which I ended up in the ER for. I also had peripheral edema, so just, like, swelling in my feet and my ankles that were really bad, and it was just really uncomfortable all the time. I'd get sores in my mouth, my hair was kind of f falling out. I started getting really bad uh, like pain in all my joints. My hands would get really stiff and swollen. I wouldn't be able to make fists. I kind of had to waddle like a penguin because my hips and my knees would buckle and felt like I would give out and I would end up falling over and not being able to get back up. I, you know, especially it was really bad in the morning because you're really stiff and you can't get out of bed. So I'd have to have my husband help me, you know, even just to get out of bed. So like my daily activities were really limited. I was really active before all this. And then all of a sudden, you know, being 22 and getting told that you have multiple things wrong with you, autoimmune diseases, it kind of it shook my world up a little bit. So in terms of being 22 and I was, you know, on my way into getting into nursing school and it kind of like put my life on halt. I had to figure out ways to be able to still take care of my patients in the hospital because I could barely lift and pull my patients up in bed or help them stand because I could barely do it myself. So getting told this diagnosis and trying to figure out where I was going to go from there was pretty difficult. I knew I still wanted to pursue nursing and so that's what kind of led me to WCU and a lot of other schools you know they denied me multiple times so I finally was like I really need to get this done I really want to get this done so when I started WCU I still was pretty in a bad flare um which a flare in on your disease means that you're just really swollen and my immune system was at its peak trying to just attack everything which is basically because in an autoimmune disease your body attacks itself so my immune system was attacking all my synovial joints and you know like my muscles and everything so it was pretty difficult to get through and then on top of that I also found out I was pregnant and decided that I was going to go through with the pregnancy and through that you know I still went to school because I couldn't stop going to school and stop my life because of my disease. That was something I had to realize was I wasn't going to stop my life because of my ailment. If anything, this is what's helped me get through and push myself through school. And a lot of people told me, how are you going to do this? How are you going to have a baby and be in nursing school with all of your problems that you have with your body? And, you know, so I had a lot of people doubt me and I had a lot of like, how are you going to do nursing if you can't do this? How are you going to do nursing if you can't do that? My answer to that is like, I just do, I'm going to get it done. I, you know, I have more of a reason now than ever before because of my daughter. So I push myself 
through. Like I find my daily inspiration in her and knowing that I'm creating a better life for us, for my husband, me and her. And yeah, times are tough right now and it's really hard with a baby. Going to nursing school is extremely difficult, but I have a good support system. I have my family and my friends and this isn't going to stop me from achieving my dreams. So I encourage you all to, even though you may be having your own personal ailments and finding that school is difficult and it's just going to get harder through, that you find that little bit of inspiration that pushes you through. Like mine was my daughter and yours could be anything. Just don't give up on your dreams because people tell you that you might not be able to do it or they don't think that you can because you always can. You can always make your dreams a reality and that's that's where I draw my inspiration from to get up and move every single day so I encourage you all don't give up keep keep going and if you know anybody who is dealing with health issues as I am and they want to pursue something in this field you know encourage them to do it because just because they might not be able to do the physical aspects of it there's so many more avenues in nursing that you can really do so I encourage you just keep going guys don't give up